Extension Artists. We are out here in the desert this morning to learn about something new. What are we going to be doing? Uh, photography. Yes, we're going to do some nature photography. You think you can do that? Sure. Yeah, you can do it. We're going to take a look at two new artists today and learn a little bit about them. We're also going to learn two different styles or types of photographs that you can take when you're out having an adventure uh, with your family or in your backyard even. All right. All that you need is a camera, a cell phone, or even your tablet will work. Anything that takes pictures. We're not being super fancy today, right? <laughs> Just getting the idea. So grab what you have or grab your family. Wouldn't that be an awesome family adventure? Yeah. And head out to look for some nature. Our first artist is Ansel Adams. Ansel Adams was a landscape photographer and environmentalist. He was known for his black and white images of the American West. Adams loved sharp focus and using a full range of tones. Remember, tones or value are all the steps in between white and black in an image. We use those all the time when we're creating art. Adams was quoted as saying, You don't take a photograph, you make it. Awesome. His photograph of Half Dome at Yosemite became one of his best known works. Another really awesome photographer we'll look at is Galen Roll. Roll was a wilderness photographer, adventure photojournalist, and climber from California. He also used his photography to bring awareness to the disappearing wilderness. His work appeared in National Geographic, Outdoor Life, and 18 books of his work were published during his lifetime. A few helpful tips from Roel? Pack light. You don't need to be fancy and have a million different cameras to get a great shot. The second one would be, don't forget to enjoy your journey. By photographing every single thing that you see along the way, you're going to miss out on actually enjoying the trip. Just see something special and shoot it, then go on your way. And finally, when you see a great shot, take it. It may not be there later on. All right, friends, let's get a shot of our own. We're going to take a look first at landscape photography and what a landscape is. A landscape is basically having to do with looking at land. If you have a landscaper, he's the guy that takes care of the land in your front yard. Um, we're taking a look at some desert landscape and what you want to be aware of is every landscape has three parts at least, right? It has, what's the first one? Foreground? Foreground. Middle ground, gotta say it loud. Background. <laughs> no, foreground, middle ground, and background. And so in our foreground of our picture today, we've got this beautiful saguaro cactus. Often our middle ground is some of this desert uh, landscape. And then in the background, we've got the four peaks and some other mountain areas. So when we take our picture today, we're keeping in mind that landscape. Now the rule of thirds, is the first thing we're going to learn about taking a landscape photograph, right? Okay, so rule of thirds works like this. You're going to imagine that your screen is broken up into thirds. Just like that. <laughs> then what you're going to do is put your most important thing, your focal point, what you want to be the center of attention, in either the right hand side, left hand side, top or bottom third of your frame. And so in our picture, what's going to be our focal point? Um, what do you think? This, if we're looking out over here, what do you think? Cactus and it's going to be a middle ground. Our cactus is going to be our focal point. He's actually in the foreground. Pretty good. Okay, cool. So when you take the picture of this guy, you're going to hold it up and you're going to make sure he is on the right hand side of your frame. So go ahead and hold it up. Find the right hand side, take it down a little, don't cut him off, you don't want to chop the top off of him. Okay, and then go ahead and shoot. And I would say take a couple shots, just to be sure you've got the best one. I'm going to have some choices. What if we move him to the left hand side a little? Awesome. Very good. What if we put him in the bottom? 
So we're gonna take a look at those later. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I just added an extra one, just in case. You sure did. All right, what using the rule of thirds does is gives basically it gives your most important thing the focus, but also it creates an interesting negative space. That's anything that's in the background, it creates an interesting shape there. It also tells us information about your subject. So if the cactus is your focal point, using the rule of thirds creates a negative space around that cactus that tells us information. It tells us where that cactus is located. He's in the desert, isn't he? He's not in somebody's backyard, <laughs> right? Duh. <laughs> this would be a big backyard. Though. That's right. It also tells us that he's in front of a beautiful mountainscape. So that rule of thirds is important because it puts him off to the side and allows us to kind of tell a story with our picture. But it still keeps him as the focus. All right, we took our shots. Now you go ahead and give it a try. Try to create at least three really good nature mm. photographs, nature landscapes, using the rule of thirds. Find a focal point. Make sure you've got foreground, middle ground, and background, okay? Try not to do, use your zoom. And oftentimes it's easiest if you find the sun at your back. Give it a try, I can't wait to see what you get. All right, friends, now we're gonna take a look at worm's eye view. What do you think worm's eye view is? Um, like down low because worms are down low. Yep, and super close up, right? right. What it would look like if you were a worm. Mm. So if you were a worm in this flower, we want our picture to look like what he would see. Okay, so we're going to get low and close. We're going to imagine what a worm would see. And we want to try to do it without zooming a whole lot. If you need to zoom a little bit, that's okay. You want to make sure your macro setting is on. Macro means tiny. And don't forget your rule of thirds. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good shot here. I'm going to take three or four or five of that so that I can pick the best one later. I'm just tapping the screen. My cell phone has an automatic focus and I just need to tap on where I want it to focus for it to focus in. Right. So I think we've got a great worm's eye view of this flower. What's what do you think? Focus? What, how do you focus? Focus is when something is blurry, it's out of focus. And when it's sharp and crisp, you're making it in focus. That's a great question. Oh wow. Let's go ahead and hit that macro setting. It's already on it. Nice and close, closer. And take it. I'm gonna move my hand so you don't have a shadow. I'm gonna go over top so you can see all that good pollen you're looking at. Okay, but it's dark. All right, awesome art friends. I hope that you have um, really taken some awesome pointers away from this and are ready to get outside with your family and explore with your camera um, or your cell phone or anything that takes pictures. Um, you don't have to be super fancy to take a great shot. Um, keep in mind, you can go and do a landscape and focus on rule of thirds. Also keep in mind, worm's eye view is an awesome option for nature shots. Here are some final tips that will help you get your best shot. Make sure that you move your body. Get closer, get further away, get down low, or think about getting up high, rather than using your zoom right from the start. If you need a zoom once you're in position, you can do that, but always get yourself in the most optimal position first, then try your zoom. The second tip is be aware of your sunlight or your light. Light is best early in the morning or late in the afternoon as the sun goes down. Also, Make sure that you've got your shot in focus before shooting, okay? And you can do that. Your cell phone has just a really easy autofocus where you just tap where your focal point is and it will focus in. If you're struggling with that, just back away. You may be just a little too close for your camera. Also, make sure that your horizon is straight. When you're taking a landscape photo, you wanna make sure that when you're looking at it, you're keeping your horizon. That's where your sky meets the land, nice and straight. You're gonna Brace your arms into your body, your elbows in, 
so that you can get good control of your camera and just tilt it if a little bit if necessary, but you'd want a nice straight horizon, especially if you're shooting water, you don't want it to look like the water's going downhill. And lastly, be patient. If you've got the perfect shot, take as many as you need to to get it just right. Oftentimes, taking a few of the same exact thing helps it to just be perfectly in focus or perfectly lined up. You may have one that's a little tilted, but then the next shot might be perfectly straight. So make sure you're taking lots and lots of shots. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you'll gather up your families, pack a snack, and hit the trail near you. You can also take some of these shots in your yard, but I'd really love it if you guys were able to head out and see some things that maybe you've never seen before. All right, guys, I hope you have fun taking pictures out on your next adventure. Be sure to share what you get with me, and I'll see you soon. Yes? <laughs> I'm losing you. I'm losing you. Are you with me? Out of this? Ow. Okay, this isn't working. Oh, more pictures I got of pulled it. my cactus. This is here. Oh! This is so hard. Are you getting all this? Yes. Can I fix that? You're sitting on my snacks. That was dumb. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. Ding the buzzer. Smash that button. <laughs> and I think we're done here. <laughs>